Hi, this is Michael from Binary Cafe with another Brainy Phase project video. This is episode two of the HX300 Expert Series. This is going to focus on memory cards. So if you bought your HX300 camera and you didn't buy a memory card, you're going to be really limited in terms of how many photos you can store. There's internal memory on the camera, but only enough to store about eight pictures. So buy a card. What kind of card? That's up to you. This camera supports Sony memory sticks. If you want to spend the extra money to get the Sony memory stick you can certainly do that I've got lots of Sony memory sticks myself but a couple years ago Sony started to support the SD memory cards which is great because it's a standard format used by lots of different devices so I'm going to talk about SD cards I'm going to talk about how to format the memory card and the basic folder hierarchy that's set up when you format your memory card on the HX300. So, not going to spend a lot of time talking about the Sony memory sticks. It's a proprietary format. You can use the little Duo Pro cards if you want to, but with the SD cards, SD stands for Secure Digital. And Secure Digital cards support up to only 2 gigabyte in size. So two gigabytes, not a lot when you have a high megapixel camera and especially if you want to shoot high definition video. So they came out with SDHC cards. For me, this is the sweet spot. This is what I like. SDHC cards are high capacity cards and they support capacities up to 32 gigabyte in size. That's a lot of storage space. That allow you to store thousands of pictures. It'll allow you to take hours worth of high definition video and it's, it's a great format, SDHC cards. If you wanted to go out and buy like a 16 gigabyte class 10 card, that would probably serve you well. If you need a little bit more storage space, go with 32 gigabyte. Now, if you want even more storage space, they do have newer cards. You have SD cards, SDHC cards, and now SDXC cards. That's extended capacity, and those cards allow you to go up to, theoretically, two terabyte in size. They don't sell those yet, unfortunately, but they do sell 64 gigabyte cards. I've got one myself. We're gonna pop it into the camera in just a minute and format it. So you can get an SDXC card at 64 gigabyte in size. Now think about what you're going to do with all those files. So you're going to take that memory card, you're going to pop it into your computer, and you're going to have to do something with it. You're going to have to copy it over to your hard drive or back it up. So just think about that when you're shooting lots of pictures is what are you going to do with it when you're done taking the pictures? And then what would you do if the memory card itself corrupted, if the memory card went bad or you lost it? So don't put too much stuff on your card. I actually do have these cases. I've gone over to kind of just archiving my memory cards instead of trying to format them all the time. So I buy these cases and I just organize my old memory cards. I'll back up the important files, the really good pictures, the really good video onto my computer's hard drive. Maybe even do online storage is another means, but I keep the original files on these memory cards and that's just a good way for me to store those and archive them. But the cards themselves, I mentioned class before, so with the class what we're talking about is a little C and a number on the inside and the capacity itself is the storage, like 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte, but there's also a class rating and that class rating ties back to the speed of the camera. If you have a class two card, that means that the card has to support a minimum transfer rate of two megabytes per second. And it's really easy once you see that little logo and you think about a C and a two as being a minimum of two megabytes per second, class four, minimum of four megabytes per second. Class six is six megabytes per second. And a class 10 is a minimum of 10 megabytes per second. Now, when you look at the card itself, you'll see that little C and you'll notice the number there. And this is a four gigabyte card. This is a class six rating. So minimum of six megabytes per second. But if I look at some of these other cards, I can see this is a Sony card. It's a class 10. So it'll do a minimum of 10 megabytes per second. This will store up to 16 gigabyte. And this is a SanDisk. I really like SanDisk cards. They're reliable. And this one is a class 10 card here. And it is a SDHC. It stores up to 32 gigabyte, 
but this one actually goes faster than the minimum the minimum so this is the minimum rating but this card will go up to 30 megabytes per second which makes this card a good candidate for high def video because the sony camera will actually do high definition video avc hd video up to 28 megabits per second so a faster card is good for high def video and then we also have this card here. I just bought this one. I thought it would be a good chance to get one. I wanted one for a while. I thought I'd test it out in the camera since I was gonna tell you it works. Well, it does work. This is actually a 64 gigabyte card, SDXC, so it's extended capacity, but check this out. It's a class 10 card, but it also has this U1. Now this is an ultra high speed card and this will actually do transfer of 40 megabytes per second. So this is a fast card with a very high storage capacity. We're gonna pop this into the camera in just a minute and format it. Uh, another thing about this is on these cards you have a little lock. If you push that down, that prevents you from accidentally writing over content or erasing the content on the memory card. And that's about all I wanted to show you for the physical SD cards, but also it's worth noting that if you have a micro SD card, these are teeny, they're scary, and they're just so small, I feel like I'm gonna drop it and lose it. This is a 32 gigabyte, and it's a micro SD, S, uh, SDHC, so it's high capacity, and this is a class 10 ultra high speed. So this is a really fast one, but I can't put it right into the camera itself because it's too small but it does come with an adapter, which allows me to put it into the camera. And then the other thing is, obviously you can transfer files by using the USB cable with a camera, or if you have an SD card reader on your computer, you can use that. But if you don't, you can buy one of these external USB type card readers. And what this allows me to do, I just carry this in my camera bag. I can plug into a standard USB port on a computer, and then I can plug in. This will support up to SDXC cards. This one actually supports memory cards as well. And then all I would need to do is just pop this in, and then I would be able to review the content. And this also works great with the Sony PlayStation 3 video game console. Um, I keep this in my camera bag, and that allows me to share content easily with friends and family when I'm traveling. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna pop that memory card in in a second, but if I look at my camera right now, you can see that I've got an icon. It says eight, and it's got like a little icon that looks like a computer chip. What that tells me is it's using internal memory and I can only store up to eight photos. So the first thing I wanna do is pop in a memory card. So I'm gonna pop that little hatch. I'm gonna take my memory card with the notch facing down and pop that into the camera. And when I close it, I should see that change. And now I can see that I can take up to, that's crazy, 9,695 pictures. These are high def pictures, uh, high resolution pictures. I can take almost 10,000 pictures. But when I pop in a memory card into the camera, it's important to format it as well. And the reason for that is because each camera follows a folder hierarchy, which is usually pretty similar, but some cameras have different databases and ways that they store thumbnail versions of the photos. So whenever I get a new memory card, I make sure I go in and format it. And I can do that by pressing menu. I then go over to the suitcase icon. If I'm up at the top, I can just get there quickly by pressing up. And then when I hit the OK button, I just go over to the left and then down to the memory card. I go over to format, and when I hit OK, I really stop and think, do I really want to erase the content of this memory card? Be careful, obviously, when you do that. In this case, this is a brand new memory card, and I'm happy to format it because I want to set up that folder hierarchy when I say OK. What it's doing is it's setting up a folder hierarchy. The most important folder for still pictures is the DCIM. That's Digital Camera Images, DCIM. That's where all of my JPEG pictures are going to be located. There are also some other folders. I'm gonna get into that structure in a later video when we start to get into the, the content storage for high def movies and MP4 movies. And the, there are additional folders which are set up on that particular uh, memory card. And some are used for still pictures, some are used for video. Right now we're just focusing on the basic formatting. Now, if I go in to take a picture, just point this out to you, and then we'll wrap up pretty quickly here. 
But I can see here as I go in to take a picture, click. I took a picture. And that is actually stored now in a folder which is marked with a 100. And that 100 is the standard folder name. Within the DCIM folder, there's a 100 folder. If I took, let's say, 400 pictures, they'd all go into that folder. And what I can do to become a little bit more organized is I can create a subfolder. If I press menu and I go back into that icon, then I go over to the memory card and go down, I can do something called create record folder. And this is just a way for me to organize my content a bit more effectively because when I say create record folder, it's going to sequentially number and create a new folder. It's going to create one called 101. I say OK. And I'm just going to verify now that if I go back, I'm just going to go to take a picture. Notice now that it says 101. So all of my new pictures are going to be located in that 101 folder. And this is just a good way for me, instead of having to parse through you know, hundreds or thousands of pictures in the same folder, just be organized. It's really easy to go in when you go out to shoot. You can use the same memory card, but just create another record folder. In this case, I'd be creating a 102, say OK. And that's just a great way to stay organized. So basically the highlights here are with the Sony DSC HX300 camera, you can use memory sticks from Sony, or you can use the SD cards. I recommend SDHC cards, either a 16 gigabyte or a 32 gigabyte card is pretty good. Class 10 is fast. That supports a minimum transfer speed of 10 megabytes per second. But if you want to, you can go up to an SDXC card and you can get up into even higher capacities. So that's pretty much it for now. I've been super busy for the past three weeks. I really want to start cranking out these videos and hopefully I'll have more time to do hopefully one to two videos a week in this expert series. So please provide comments. Let me know if this is valuable to you. We're going to start digging into some really cool content coming up pretty quickly here. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. So thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.